So in the lesson number three, we are going to do something a little bit more advanced and might get a little technical, but we're going to keep it as simple as possible. What we want to do is we want to avoid entering any redundant or duplicate leads into our sheet. For example, if I go ahead and insert one more record from the Google Facebook Messenger, uh, from the Facebook Messenger to my Google Sheets rather, it will go ahead and insert that record one by one in here. However, I don't want to have any lead which is already inserted into the sheet. So here's where I can use if conditioning logic. So if I stop the journey, I'll just briefly explain what I'm going to do before I do it. I'm going to query my existing spreadsheet and I'm going to identify if there is any record in there which indicates the same email address as I've inserted just now. And if there exists a copy into it, I will not insert it into my Google Sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and search in the entire column number B if this email is present or not. If it is not, I'm going to insert it. So keep that logic in mind and now we're going to work through the steps. So before I add any row, I'd like to clone this step. Because what I want to do before this is to sort of query it. So if I choose the action and I choose search cell query, I can now search for a specific uh, spreadsheet column. So let's just ignore this for a minute. Just choose the worksheet, which will be the sheet number one. And I'm gonna just gonna type in a query string. Now query string is similar to a MySQL query. So it contains of some operations such as select, insert. However, query string in sheets only allows you to select at this moment with the current APIs. So you can only perform a select operation in this particular case. So what do I need to do is, I want to choose the column number B, correct? So I write in select B. So it's only going to return me the records which belong to the column number B. However, I don't want to return all the records. I only care about the record which matches the email address that I give in. So I'll just have to say select B where B is equal to something. Now if you recall in the Facebook Messenger in the step number two, that is where we are collecting the email address. So any string in any programming language generally tends to go in a quote. So I'm going to insert a quote over there, similarly to a programming language or any query per se. And I'm going to choose from ask a question, the answer. So what does this mean? It's going to select the column number B, where B equates to the email address that the user is inserting. Very simple so far. And finally, I'm going to label this. Because B doesn't really indicate much to me, so I'm going to label B as email. So whenever I see the output or whenever I'm dealing with this kind of a data structure, I'll be able to reflect email rather than seeing just column number B. Finally, this is for generating output. So as you saw over here, the output tree, it sort of automatically gives you a bunch of variables which the action is performing. Then, but however, there might be some situations where we are not able to compute it, such as in this case where you can type in any query dynamically, we don't really know what is gonna come out of the query uh, without you letting us know. So over here, we expect that the user types in a sample response of what they expect to receive in JSON format. So since we gave it the label email, I'm typing email over here. And I'll show you in real working version of why did we do this. Now that this is done, this looks something like this, where it doesn't really make much sense. What I want to do is, if this record returns me something which is not present, only then I want to insert it. So I'll just choose this, add an action, and choose if condition. Now I'm going to set up the if condition saying that if uh, the cell query, just one second, uh -huh. cell query, and the query itself seems okay. Uh, however, let me just go over here and set up the condition. Oh, there you go. I think I made a mistake. However, what I wanted to do is I wanted to check if the email 
which I dragged and drop over there, is present or not. Okay? But rather than saying is present, I'm going to say if it's not present. Because I only want to insert the record in case when it is not present. Now as you can see, it gives you a slight indentation inside to the action that you want to perform. So I can literally drag the add new record inside over here so that this operation will only be performed when this condition satisfies. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this last step which comes as a dummy pre-included which you may or may not keep. So in this case, I don't really need it. So there you go. Save and start. Now what's going to happen is if I insert a lead again with the name and email, sorry, the email rather with Krisha Google Co, it will directly skip this. So let me just open up this command over here and I'm going to type in hi once again. I'm going to type in my name because that's what it's going to ask for and I'm going to enter my email address which now should not be inserted into my Google Sheet. So let us do that. First go back to the sheet. See there's no changes. Let me go and refresh. In the latest job which just occurred right now, I'll be able to see that the same set of operations did happen, did take place. However, the condition came out to be false because Krish at quickwork.co does exist. Well, let me try something else. Let me type in hi and let me say John instead of Krish and John at the rate quickwork.co. Now this should absolutely insert a new record into the sheet as you can plainly see over here. And we are sort of good to go. And it did not insert a duplicate record. So that's how you use conditioning logic. Now let me go back, let me go to the journey again, and let me stop this journey. Let me use formulas. Now since we don't, as you probably saw over here, the email address inserted is in uppercase, because that's what the user typed in. But if you want to have a clean data set or you want to perform some data transformation, we support full Node.js capability in our existing platform. So let's say that your email should always be to lowercase. Imagine this to be a variable, okay? And if you wanna transform any variable, you can write functions. So what you can do is you can just switch to formula mode and now you can type in absolutely any Node.js transformation that you like. For example, dot to lowercase, not uppercase. What will this ensure is no matter what email I type in, from the user's input, this is going to convert it to lowercase. Let me show it to you in action. Let me just save this and hit the start. Now, if I go back to my uh, Facebook Messenger, I'm going to deliberately type in uh, John Q and I'm going to type in a new email address so that we insert it into this, uh, the sheet. But this time I'm going to type the email address a bit with lowercase characters, uppercase characters, and a few mistakes in there, doesn't really matter. And insert an appropriate email as well. Now see, this, uh, this goes to show you that since I inserted a wrong email address, it says that please try again, which is great because I didn't show you this in the previous lessons. But let me copy and paste this once again and type in with a CO. Now this is a valid email, so this must have inserted into the spreadsheet because it's a unique one. But as you can plainly see, it went and transformed it to lowercase as we indicated it to do. So in similar fashion, you can build any uh, small snippets of JavaScript or Node.js to be more specific in there to, to do any data transformation that you like. You can define variables, you can write a small function, and you can call it as well. So this has been a lecture number three where we showed you how to use conditional logic and formulas. Thank you very much.